Okay, welcome back to Hipsy Studio. And today we have a slimline tent fold card for you to make with uh, lots of messy, inky work. So this is the card that we are going to be uh, creating. We're going to be using uh, Janine's Art Butterfly Mix and Match die set. And I've got um, two distress oxides to create this little bit here. And then two of these lovely Cosmic Shimmer watercolour inks. This one is Flamingo Pink and this one is Turquoise Cascade to create a really lovely inky background that we're going to die cut into. Okay, so we'll start with the, the really messy bit because it does need time to dry. Um, so if you are going to do this, it's something that you need to prep in, in advance. So I have got two pieces of uh, A5 white stamping card. Okay. And I am going to put one to one side and then I, uh, I have um, a spray bottle and I want to make this card really, really wet. Um, literally, I'm going to move this out of the way otherwise that will get wet too. Uh, literally, I am going to spray it really, really, really wet. Now you can, because um, when card gets wet, it will start to bow. You can turn it over and spray the other side. I'm not going to bother. Um, because quite often if you leave it to dry on its own, it will flatten out or you can put it between some heavy books. So now I've got these inks. Now these inks, I really like the bottles of these, but this little bit that you press down because inside we have a pipette, a little glass pipette. So when you're pressing down, you're, when it's in the ink, you're bringing the ink up. And then when you get it over here, you can literally just stop doing that. And you can see I don't have as much water up there because it's not moving so much. I'm going to do the same with the pink. And it really is wet. It's weak. And if it's not moving as much as you want, just start getting in there. And I'm also going to go in with my brush because I want to start to mix this up a little bit. And you can see we're now starting to get some nice little purples in here as well. Okay. Just do it how you want. Now it does look messy, it doesn't look, you see, ugh. but actually this is exactly what the one I used for, for my card looked like. Now, next thing, I'm going to take my other piece of card and I'm going to swoosh. Okay, so we now get much more muted Sludgy, nice bit of background. In fact, you get two. Okay. Now that does need time to dry. So I'm going to put this one, and this one which is slightly darker, so I'm dripping in everywhere. We're not going to waste that. I'm going to put these two to the side to dry. Okay. Now, don't want to waste this. Now, I um, I you can mop this up with a tissue, but I do tend to use um, just a plain piece of um. Rice paper, you can get this in a pad from Amazon, okay? And you can see how much ink I have all over this area. And I don't want to waste it, so I'm going to add a bit more water. And I am literally going to use this as if I was using a paper towel. And I am going to wipe all of that lovely ink back up. Now this, I will leave to dry, okay? Because this, will now create a nice piece of rice paper for me to use in a mixed media project somewhere, but none of that ink has been wasted. Okay, so I am going to get, because I'm working quickly, I'm just going to use my little towel just to dry this off so I don't get the rest wet. Now, I have one, in all good Blue Peter fashion, Ooh, hiding away really, under here, that I did before, and that's the one we're going to use today because they will take a little while to dry, but you can spend hours having fun making all those messy backgrounds. So the card itself uh, is a slimline card. So we can take a piece of A a piece of A4 card and we, we need we need two thirds of it. Now this is the Gemini magnetic mat you might have um, uh, a gridded uh, mat and I know that if I put this this way round but two squares in from the bottom here will give me exactly what I need. So I don't need to really measure much. And I'm going to trim it off straight down. 
on the floor. Okay. So you need this piece, so don't throw this piece away. It's going to be used for our next bit. We need our scoring board and we are going to score at, oh, excuse me, three and seven eighths, if I have got my calculations correct. So at three and seven eighths, I'm going to score down and I have my slimline temporal card. Okay. I'm going to put that again to the side. Now this this piece that's left over is the bit that we're going to do some ink in, inking on with our distress oxides. So I have tumble glass and I have mermaid lagoon, uh, both oxides. So oxides are the inks that are um, much more opaque. Uh, uh, they give a much nicer blend uh, as well. And I like to use blended brushes, but they are the cheap sort of, you know, ones you get off of the big site. So literally, I'm going to go in onto my Mermaid Lagoon and I'm just going to start nice and lightly bringing it in. Doesn't matter where you start. It's kind of giving an almost like a sky effect. Looks like I've still got a bit of blue ink <laughs> before. I'm going to go and get some tumbled glass and start blending that in. I'm not particularly looking for a smooth blend. I want that kind of open spaces as well. So I'm not looking for the two colours to become completely blended together. Okay. A bit more of the Mermaid Lagoon. Okay. Now I chose these blues. Um, the Mermaid Lagoon really matches well to that turquoise cascade ink. And then I was looking for a lighter tone to go with it and the tumbled glass provides that particular lighter tone. So you can see it kind of is looking like a summer sky, a few clouds, ready for our little butterflies from our butterfly mix and mat. So I'm just going to leave it at, at that. I don't need to do anything else to that. Let's put those to the side. Okay, so I have my, my base card. I have already cut a piece of um, pink uh, fuchsia cintura pearl and I'm just now going to trim this so that it fits on. Again, I like to do this by eye. I'm, some things I will measure, <clears throat> particularly if you're scoring and you need to know exactly where you're going to be scoring, but things like uh, matting and laying, I'm very much a by eye. So I've literally laid that down on top of the bit that's going on and I'm going, right, it'll go there and there. And then I get my, oh, I will get my trimmer and I slice on those lines. There. And I'm sitting a bit stupid. And down there. Okay, so I now have my mat and layers for now. You can see I've got I have messy fingers and I'm already transferring my messy fingers onto there, but don't worry about it, just adds to it. So you can see so far I've got my pink layer and I've got my blue layer. So now we're going to use um, our swooshy ink with our lovely dyes from Janine's Art. So it really is a case of deciding where you want to put them. So I want two of these, I want one of these, and one of each of the butterflies. So I'm just going to place them on for a first pass through the Gemini, fix them down um, with some low tech tape. Now this is another reason why I would leave this to fully dry because if you put this through when it's still fairly damp, your low tack tape, even though it's low tack, will just literally rip the surface off of um, the card and you can end up ruining your uh, lovely die cut. So let's grab our plate. So we have our cutting plate. I'm going to put our piece of card on. I'm going to go slightly on a skew with there so we're not going straight lines through the machine. We have our um, cloudy plate. No, Carol, that wouldn't work. That's your measuring board, your magnetic sheet. And uh, that, would, that would have been an interesting one to try and put through. I don't think it would have gone. And off it pops through. Move my messy brush out as well. 
I really am going to have to grow some longer arms. Uh, oh, to, oh, out it pops. Excuse, please excuse me. I am not quite long enough in the arm there. So, so here's our first cup of three butterflies. So even now you can see it's taken off that top layer where the ink is. So just be very careful. There's my three butterflies. I'll leave those just aside because I don't need to cut those again. I have my one frame. Keep this piece. I'm going to use it for something else. And I have this lovely decorative piece. And I'm just going to run my brush over the top of it to remove all my bits. And then get my poker tool and just poke it out. And it will come out really beautifully. Perhaps if you have nails, which I don't know. There we go. Okay. Okay, there are a few tiny, tiny, tiny little bits. They are cut. We just need a little bit of an extra push out. So there's one, and we're going to do this again. Okay. Now I can see where I placed that one. I got a little bit of white, but it's just what it is. Ooh. Sticking to the dark. So I'm going to put this one back in. Just make sure all the bits are out before we do that. And we'll get it there. Ah, uh, I'm trying to avoid. The, um, the white bits this time, so this should look like tape. Put that down and just put my board back on and back to the machine. And while that's doing that, I'm going to bring my card back in and I'm going to start looking at how to place my pieces. Now you'll notice that I have, I bring my main card back in, that I have a white background there. You don't have to do that, but I thought it brought out um, the sentiment a bit. So we'll, we'll look at how to do that in a moment. Let's get our second uh, piece back out. Under there. This bit looks quite a lot brighter than the first bit. There we go. And our brush all over the top of it. Now, if if you have <clears throat> lots of patience, which I don't, um, there are some lovely little bits in here that you could keep for tiny little embellishments, either on this project or uh, on other projects. Um, but uh, I'm afraid I'm, I'm not a great one with all those fiddly little bits. They're just... Uh, a little bit of time. So here we go. As you can see, this one is a lot brighter. Now I could, if I was being really picky, I could decide, actually, I want another one like this and go back in. But for the sake of what we're doing, it will do. Um, but you have that choice. No background that you ever do uh, uh, will be the same. They will be completely different and unique. Okay, so there's our, our two edges and our bit for our um, centre. So now all I did in order to get a white background was take an offcut of the card and just very very roughly measure if you can see I've just let this go slightly over and I'm just marking it slightly in and the same here just let it go slightly over the edge and just mark slightly in okay now because I know I need three that size I'm going to cut down the whole strip so it's all the same length, excuse me. Okay, I'm going to cut the first one off that I've already marked. And then I'm going to use that to work out where to cut the next two rather than going and measuring. Because they're all the same, the dies, the, the, um, the frame die, this die is exactly the same size as this one. So you're going to have the same size uh, background to cut. And three. Okay, let's move that out of the way. So, <clears throat> very easy to attach those. You get your glue. And hopefully I haven't plugged the nozzle on this one. There we go. And literally all I'm going to do is I'm going to dot 
just along that border. Doesn't need to be a, a continuous strip. And on any larger bits, just so that they pick up. And then I'm going to just put, place this on the back. And there we have it with our white background. Okay. Same with these, just literally go around the border. Bosh, bosh, bosh. This one, again, with the, the intricate one. Just pick up a couple of the, the bigger bits inside, just so that that intricate bit sticks down onto the white. Let's make sure I put that back on so that we don't have an issue later. And then we put this on the back and then this one on the back here. Okay, so this is where we're at. I've got my bits ready to go. Okay. Now I, I then use this to create an inner block. That, that, that's the bit that came out of here originally. So all I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to trim off a little bit of that so that we get a white border. Literally. Bear with me a moment. Because it's a smaller bit. It just takes a little bit of wiggling in there. Just a little bit up of there. And as you can see again, I'm not a great sort of accurate measure up, kind of do it a little bit by eye and a little bit by think. So this now fits in there with a bit of a white border. And for my sentiment, again, I just want a smaller piece still. So I'm going to buff that up to that mat. And I'm going to think, mm, I'm going to have a roughly that amount of border there, roughly that amount of border there. And again, just chop that off. Okay, oh, excuse me. And then that will fit here. Okay, now that piece here you, it is um, <clears throat> perfect for if you want to stamp your sentiment, if you have a die cut sentiment, uh, it's entirely up to you. I just happen to use um, one of the die cuts. Uh, the old crafters companion sentiment uh, because it fits nicely in there and I've cut it out of the, the, the pink centura. So literally this is now ready to assemble. So I'm just going to move it off the card, get my glue, start with the, the big mat and I must admit I don't think I cleaned up my ink particularly well because I'm getting little bits all over but um, you will do a better job than that when you're at home. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this is this is the distress oxide layer to add that kind of like sky effect. Okay. And then now you could you can put these flat on if you want a bit of dimension. You could use a bit of glue gel here. And the other thing. I know I did before was to reverse them. So if you look, that is the same way round. So what I will do with this one is flip it over. No, or was it the right way around the first way? No, I think it was. Yeah, that's the way it is. And I'm flipping it there. My apologies. Ah. Just so it's not um, exactly up the same way. That one goes there. Before I stick this on, I will add my little coloured bit in there, a white bit, just to make the uh, sentiment pop. Okay, let's put that down. Now, if you have um, a really fine nozzle, then these are really easy to do. I'm just going to find my tweezers. I oh. Have I really just got that stuck in my hair? I'm very sorry. I have lost half my sentiment. <laughs> I got caught in my hair. We didn't have somewhere on the floor. But I will show you how I would do the first part. <laughs> I don't know where that went. No? <laughs> Not 
to worry. I'll show you. I'll show you how I would do this bit. I tend to hold it in my tweezers, and I tend to just very gently dab the glue on the back, and to to get rid of any excess, either on a scrap piece of paper or on the back of my hand, and then. Because I've got the tweezers, I can get a little bit of um, control over it. Okay, we found it. Excellent. So again, hold it up the way that you want to stick it. Turn it over, holding your other hand. Get your glue very gently dab around. Make sure most of it is covered. Remove any excess either on your hand or on the scrap piece. And then bring it up to where you want it to be. Now, the last bit we need to do is we need to get our lovely little butterflies. So let's find our three dies. One, and there's two of them. And the other one's hiding in there. Okay, we're going to just run the brush over to remove as much as we can before we poke it out. There's this one. Now, I, I will put this one as though it's uh, balancing on the corner there. This one here make, uh, looks like it's sort of partly in flight and it looks like it's heading in from the other angle. So I'll put this one at this end and then the last one of the three butterflies in the set is a full on sort of face facing you kind of butterfly and that one can go at the, the bottom. And it's one of those, um, you've probably heard it before, like a rule of three. Things always look better in three. So we've got our, our three three parts here, and then we have our three butterflies. It, it just makes uh, the card look more structured. So now again, you can um, slightly shape these little butterflies and then just put a little bit of glue on that bit here. So she's got a little bit of dimension there. And then same with this. And you can see even from the where the butter I put the butterflies that some of them are paler. So think about where you're placing your dies on your, your inky background, um, depending on what you want your outcome to look like on your card. Okay. So I've just got a couple of little bits put in there. Just put those up on the poker tool. Come and then my last butterfly on there. There we go. Oh, I don't need to turn it around. So that's the one we just made. This is the one I made earlier. Pretty similar. Okay.